Hello guys, Winston here. I recently had the privilege of being invited by NASA to witness the launch of the SpaceX CRS-13 resupply mission to the International Space Station, which you've probably guessed by now made me very excited. If you've been with my channel for any length of time, you may recall that I got to do something similar three years ago for the SpaceX CRS-5 mission. And that experience, in addition to rekindling my passion for all things aerospace, also ignited a sense of photography equipment inadequacy in me that I vowed to address before my next launch. In particular, the lightweight tripod I traveled with turned out to be a bit of a liability. When you're shooting with a 300mm lens on the open causeway, the wind coming off the water shakes your camera and makes it look like you're filming in an earthquake. I can't afford the space or the money to lug around a big professional grade tripod, but I can weigh down my tripod to dampen out vibrations and resist buffeting. The only problem is that this tripod doesn't come with a hook at the bottom like some better thought out ones do, and you can't buy a hook to retrofit this one with. While you could maybe epoxy a hook to the plastic cap that covers the bottom of my tripod's neck, putting any loads on thin, threaded plastic makes me a little uncomfortable, as does drilling a hole through any thin tubing to bolt on attachments. So, as CNCers often do, I decided to make my own solution. In this case, I would machine a cap with an eye bolt that could support the load of my backpack as ballast. The material I would use for my cap was brass. I had some conveniently sized chunks that I'd originally planned on turning into branding irons, complete with holes sized to be tapped for quarter 20. To do this, I first started by taking some measurements from the original cap looking at height and diameter. Then I had to determine what kind of threads I needed. The dimensions of the threaded portion of the cap most closely resembled a 16mm diameter profile with a 0.75mm thread pitch. To be able to tightly screw my cap into the bottom of my tripod, I needed some surface features on the knob portion that I could grip securely. I'd add some indentations around the perimeter of my cap with radii just larger than that of the end mill I'd be using, eighth inch. I modeled up a mock-up of my new cap with all the features I'd come up with and did some additional refining. I added tiny fillets on all the hard corners of the grip texture just to break the edges, I'd chamfer all reachable edges, and I'd partially hollow out the core of my tripod adapter to save weight. Most of the cam for this project was stuff I've done before. Face my cylindrical stock material to the desired length, adaptive cut away 99% of what needs to go, use contours and pockets to true up everything to final dimensions, and then 2D chamfer my top facing edges. By the way, NYC CNC went way deeper into chamfer operations than I did for my 2D chamfer video, and it's worth a watch if you haven't seen it already. I could have used a contour toolpath with multiple stepovers for this top chamfer instead of making two progressively deeper 2D chamfer toolpaths. Now, here's the wrinkle in my tool padding plans. I would need to thread mill my part. You see, I'd originally purchased an M16 by 0.75mm die on eBay. This was a couple weeks prior to launch. The vendor never specified handedness of the threads, and I was too foolish to question it. Turns out, it was the wrong direction. This die would create parts that engage counterclockwise. And I discovered this a couple days prior to leaving for Florida, and the only thread forming tools available with Amazon Prime were thread mills, so my hand was kind of forced here. The tool I ended up using was a single form thread mill. And these types of cutters only have one row of teeth and can cut threads with variable pitch. I added it to my tool library and moved on to trying to figure out the tool pathing for it. To do thread milling in Fusion 360, start by applying a 2D thread operation to a cylindrical face. Then set the feeds and speeds as required to observe safe minimum chip loading, and don't copy my values verbatim. A. I have no idea what I'm doing. B. Your achievable feeds and speeds will vary based on tool and machine rigidity. My thread milling tool has an extremely long and thin neck, which means it's weaker and subject to greater deflection. I ended up slowing down my feeds by about 20% and taking a spring pass at the end. In the heights tab, I changed my bottom height to 4mm from the bottom of my cylinder. The passes tab is where most of the magic happens. First and foremost, I want right-handed threads. None of this left-handed nonsense. You turn this way, and your part should feed in this direction. Thread pitch is 0.75mm. Pitch diameter offset is the difference between the major and minor diameter. It's basically the depth of engagement your thread mill will have when cutting. These specs vary by thread size, so look up the appropriate values for whatever you're thread milling. This cap has a single thread as evidenced by the single entry point at the top. Compensation type is in computer. Multiple passes for sure because we want to go easy on this thread mill. When determining stepovers, be sure to consider the fact that these are uniform increments. Material removal and cutting stresses don't increase linearly with depth of cut, they increase exponentially. Be conservative. Repeat or spring pass? Yes please. And finally, climb versus conventional? I usually stick with climb cutting, as I did for this project, but CNC Cookbook suggested that conventional milling might be preferable in certain deflection limited situations, and I think this could definitely qualify. And that pretty much covers the important details for thread milling. Let's get to cutting. 
My stock was a chunk of brass that I'd prepared on a lathe with a 732nd inch hole tapped for quarter 20 on one end. This allowed me to screw the piece onto a block of MDF which was then clamped onto my Nomad's bed. I used a center finder to touch off the sides and align my spindle. Once I was zeroed out over the center of my stock, I started the operations with my 8th inch end mill. Once those were complete, I loaded up a cheap little V-bit for chamfering. And finally, it was time to thread mill. I loaded up the thread mill in my quarter inch ER11 collet, zeroed it off like any other end mill, said the requisite prayers to the machining gods, and hit run. The resulting operation sounded honestly terrible. That long thread mill is a screechy, vibration prone cutter. If you don't need to thread mill to extreme depths, definitely try to find an appropriate length thread mill for your application. But acoustics aside, I was very pleased to find that the resulting threads were quite serviceable. They were a little snug on the tripod shaft, so I actually ended up running one more pass with a larger pitch diameter offset. You have to be careful when doing this because that's not always the right way to fix tight threads. Thread teeth are usually spec to have a small flat at the tip so as not to interfere with imperfectly grooved teeth on the opposing face. I was decreasing the outer diameter of my cap by cutting deeper, but also potentially creating more slop in the thread engagement. The proper way to do this would be to establish the correct outer diameter in the first place. Externally threaded M16 features should have a major diameter of about 15.9mm. I was closer to 16.0, which would have been a bit of an interference fit on the tripod. I should have modeled my cap at 15.9mm and stuck to my original pitch diameter offset. I didn't care though, I'd be tightening the cap until it bottomed out. The final step in fabricating my tripod adapter was to add an eye hook in the form of a quarter 20 eye bolt. Using a nut on one end, I could keep tension on the threads and prevent the eye bolt from coming loose and that completed my tripod hook attachment. With a carabiner, I could not only easily attach my backpack to my tripod and weigh it down, but also keep my backpack off the fire ant infested grass lining the NASA causeway. There was nothing left to do except head to Florida and hopefully catch a rocket launch. To see how that experience went down, check out the other video I released alongside this one. And that's all I have, not only for this video, but also for this year. I want to thank you guys very much for joining me on my quest to achieve CNC competence. It's been a year of tremendous growth for me, and I've never been more excited about the journey ahead. The Maker community is the sole reason I've been pushing so hard to continue producing new content and explore new techniques. Operating as a small business, my YouTube and project-related expenses have totaled nearly $10,000 this year, and it's only because you guys give me a voice that I'm able to justify this kind of time and money investment. I wish you guys all happy passage into the new year, and I'll be back with even better CNC content in 2018.